As an introduction, we'd like to acknowledge that our mission at Vos Library is to advance learning, inspire curiosity, enrich lives, and promote community. With that in mind, let me introduce our guest. Randy has found her way with Clay for more than 40 years here in Maine. Her long artistic career allows her to consider herself a ceramic sculptor, a potter, an installation artist, and workshop leader for all levels of ability. She loves teaching and inspiring others to find their own creative voice. Randy creates one-of-a-kind commissioned tile installations for kitchens and baths. She collaborates closely with her clients to create unique residential tile installations that complement the home. And she has more than 35 large-scale relief tile and mixed media installations permanently placed in corporate, excuse me, private and public settings such as schools, libraries, and hospitals. A short list includes Eastern Maine Medical Center's Pediatrics Facility in Bangor, Maine, Maine Medical Center's Emergency Wing Entrance Hall in Portland, Maine, Castleton State College in Castleton, Vermont, Gorham Middle School in Gorham, Maine, and Babson College in Wellesley, Massachusetts. A sampling of Randy's ceramic art is currently on display at our library, Vos Library in Union, Maine, and we're very fortunate to have it there. Without further ado, please help me welcome Randy Fine. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Randy, if you could um, show us yourself. You're, I know you're behind the scenes right now. Just give us a wave, hello, hello. And I am going to, you are, you're muted. There we go, technical difficulties. There. Thank you everybody for um, tuning in tonight. I'm very excited about this whole program and thank you, Deborah, as well. All right. So we're gonna show this pre-recorded video that Randy and I put together at Vos Library and this is the exhibit. And she's going to talk through um, some of her work there and I hope you enjoy it. And then um, following that, we're going to have a little talk and she's going to take us to her studio and also offer some images for us. So um, I hope everybody stays muted. That would help with the sound on the video. And here we go. And we are so fortunate to have her work on exhibit here. And also, this presentation is about Randy taking us through her work and really explaining to us some of the process. Welcome, Randy. Randy. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so great to have my show here at the Vos Library. And um, it's wonderful to be in a, a place where there's so many other wonderful art books and my art as well. Um, this show is going to be up here at the library until the end of December. And um, and through uh, Zoom, you get to see it without leaving the comfort of your home. At the end of this pre-recorded session, we're going to be visiting my studio live in Camden, where, I'll, where I'm working on a, a tile commission for residents in Florida. And we'll also have a Q&A at that point. as well. So, um, so here we are, we're at uh, my show. And um, the series that we're looking at here, um, were all done pretty much within the last three years. And um, I've been working in clay forever, it seems like I've actually been working in clay for 40 years. Um, I'm actually using my college degree. I got a BFA in ceramics and a BS in art education at the 
uh, University of New York at New Paltz. And um, from there, I went on to do um, art shows and wholesale shows, and I was selling to galleries and different shops all over the US and uh, launched my career um, doing clay and really haven't stopped. Um, also, I've been fortunate to do a lot of teaching as well, freelance teaching as a visiting artist in different schools all over Maine. But I want to start off by talking about this piece that um, I have in the beginning part of the show. So um, as a child, I was influenced by sumi painting, Japanese brushstroke, and um, I used to practice with my um, my Japanese brushes and um, working with the fluid sense of the line. And, um, and I've, I've kept that, that kind of uh, sensibilities of working um, spontaneously in a sense with line. And, um, but living on the coast of Maine, I'm very influenced by the sea. And um, I, I have a fascination with lobsters and also um, the fact that uh, they perhaps could become a endangered species here in the state of Maine because of the warming of the Gulf of Maine. And um, so these lobster plates are kind of an ode to um, the lobsters. Um, and um, I have to say that um, when I was in France many years ago, I got to see the ceramics of um, Picasso. And um, Picasso worked on, on platters with his fluid lines. And I was influenced by the way he just worked on these beautiful clay pieces. And, um, and so many of these have that kind of Picasso-esque uh, line work about them as well. So a little bit of Japanese, a little bit of Picasso, and a lot of Randy Fine on these. So this is my, uh, my, my black and red lobster series. This piece is actually sold to a lucky person who saw it on Facebook uh, while it was on the show. And um, I like the way these are laid out. Um, they don't, the, the image doesn't take up the entire space. They're made to be used. And um, so that if you're serving um, something to your guests or, or um, some kind of a serving platter, you can actually show part of the design and then have um, crackers or pate or whatever you choose to be serving on the side as well. So the design becomes part of the, um, the dinner in a sense. <laughs> I'm going to just talk briefly about these particular pieces. I call them um, my starry night pieces. They're probably tough to see. Um, I'm fascinated with the night sky. And um, this is a glaze that I perfected that has ground glass in it. And when the glass melts in the kiln, it creates sort of these little star bursts. And um, so this is a, a set of two starry night platters. And uh, all the work, um, like I said, is meant to be used. Um, they're all, you can put them in your microwave and um, your dishwasher as well. I'm um, gonna move on to another series of pieces. These are more recent pieces that I, I have done. So these are my, my frame tile pieces. And um, these are uh, rigged up in the back to be hung up on the wall. Um, here at the library, we have them on little easels for display. And um, I always joke around that a lot of my work uh, winds up being bathroom art. And uh, working in ceramics, it's really the perfect type of material for a steamy room, such as um, such as a bathroom. So these pieces um, are individual pieces that are made to be hung on the wall. This is an interesting technique where um, um, is an Italian technique called scraffito, which means in Italian, I believe, to scratch. And um, I lay down um, different colors, in this case, purple, blue, and kind of um, a blue green. And then I scratch through the surface. Um, and you can't make a mistake. Like once, once you do that line, that line, you're committed to that line. Um, I have a, a sketchbook of images that um, uh, sort of like my archive of work. And so from that archive, when I 
comes time to do a series of tiles such as this, I will look in my sketchbook and kind of get my chops down and my inspiration to start on this series. And um, I'm pretty pleased with how these came out with the frames. The frames really complement the, the designs as well. So, um, so the, this is my Scrafito tile series. We're going to just move over to these three plates that are on display here. They're, um, they're each slightly different. And, and I have to say that um, one of the really cool things about um, my career in clay, I have to say, is that um, even though people might say I'm a potter, um, potters are really known for working in um, multiples. Um, in, in a sense, what I do, each individual piece is um, its own unique piece. Um, so even if I was going to do a series of these or a set of these lobster plates, they would all be a little bit different and unique. Um, I'm one of those people that in my home, if I have a, a set of glassware, I want each glass to be an experience when I use it. I don't, I don't want them to be all the same. And, and I, I work that way in my studio as well. Um, these particular pieces on, on each side um, are, are a little bit different technique where um, I'm working with um, underglazes and um, silk screening these images, whereas this one is um, individually painted. And, uh, and then I can repeat some of these images and collage them onto the surface. And then again, um, on this particular one, I left um, a blank area as well. So the, um, the design doesn't take up the, uh, the entire eating surface. And um, I like the colors on this particular piece as well. We're gonna look at um, one more of these lobster plates. This one, um, is um, a little bit more colorful than the rest. And um, I do need to say that uh, the type of materials that I'm working with is, um, uh, they're called underglazes. And um, basically they go underneath a clear glaze. And um, the, the crazy alchemy about working with these particular um, glazes, and, and those of you who have done ceramics would know this, is when you lay down the color, unlike a painter, what you see is not what you get. So when I'm painting this particular lobster plate, for instance, this orange is kind of sort of like a persimony color. Um, and then the, the blue is kind of a darker blue. Um, and so the only way that you can kind of move forward and feel confident about doing um, painting with underglazes is just really to do a lot of it and do a lot of experimentation and keep notes about what happens with all these different layering as well. And um, I particularly like this piece because it has a lot of depth to it and uh, a lot of great color as well. Um, so that's another one of those uh, kind of a dancing lobster, if you will. And then we're going to just uh, walk over to the other side of the bookcase. And we're going to on zoom, zoom in on these little tiles here. Um, I've been working with this technique of um, taking photographs and then uh, digitizing them into um, decals in a sense. So um, it's kind of a long process, another one of those process things. So here comes out the teacher in me um, working um, with um, an image. I'll digitize that particular image and then I will take that image and then print it onto a substrate on my uh, special printer that prints with an ink that is actually mostly iron oxide. And so that substrate carries that iron oxide image. And then in the third firing of my tiles, I can transfer that image onto the tile. So 
Um, I can manipulate my photographs. Um, I also do it with some of my drawings as well. And um, these particular creatures are near and dear to my heart. This is my cat, Toby. Um, and then this is also our dear Henry, the English spring or spaniel who um, has gone on to doggy heaven. But um, it's a great way to uh, memorialize uh, pets. And I did uh, other people's pets as well. Um, and, and just um, some of the other decals would be um, these as well. So I love mermaids. And this is a, uh, a decal image on a field tile. This one's called Snow Mermaid. Kind of help like move that one a little bit, and a little bit of uh, collage work on that too. Some shells found on the beach in Florida, and um, and this is a, a another lobster plate. Oh, I said I wasn't going to show any more lobster plates. Well, here's another one, and um, this one is a little bit different because I'm incorporating um, my my hand painting along with the the um, the decal as well. So, um, and it's, it's an interesting way to do the registration on here because you have to paint the orange on first, fire that whole piece, and then come back later into another firing and you lay that decal on top. Um, I'm actually not making these anymore because they're so tactical. And uh, once I figured it out, um, I, was, I was kind of done with them. That's usually my mantra is, you know, I love the challenge. And then once I've got all the kinks out of it, I'm sort of done with producing them. So I think this is the last one of that particular series. Um, we're going to move on to something really completely different. Um, so these are my Jackson Pollock plates. And um, I love painting with long um, kind of uh, horsehair brushes. And so in the studio, I'll set up this super messy place, like with a big box, and then I'll get all my paints out um, and in the Jackson Pollock style, just start going like splash everything. And um, it's, 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 it's a great way to get out some frustrations too. Cleaning up is not that much fun, but um, sometimes the results are great like this, not always. Um, but this is a, another one of, of those plates and they're, they're even painted on the back too. So, um, the red and black, I think works really well. And, uh, these are, uh, pretty hefty plates too, very durable. Um, so ode to Jackson Pollock. And, um, yeah, so I know I wasn't going to talk about lobsters anymore, but this is this one's called lavender lobster. So I love the whole concept of um, the rarity of a blue lobster and how if you've ever seen a blue lobster, they're they're really gorgeous and um, and just the fact that it's it's unique, just like the work that I produce. And so a lot of times I'm working with blue. Um, blue lobsters for that reason. And um, so this is part of that series. And then again, you can see how these are also painted on the back too. I think that the front of the plate and the back of the blade are just as important because when you're handling it, the intimacy of eating off of a plate and then washing it and touching it, it's all, it's all part of it. Um, they're not just meant to be looked at it. They're really, clay is so tactile, it's, it's really meant to be handled and used and, uh, and hopefully in part of your everyday life as well. So um, I like painting the backs of them too. Like this one is kind of flowy and fun on the back too. So I think we're gonna end here with, um, this is a, a cookie jar. I used to do um, architectural cookie jars, plus I love cookies. Um, and um, this, is a, this is kind of a newer one where I incorporated um, different drawings. Um, this is one of my tree woman drawings. Um, this is of course stolen off of the web, the Da Vinci um, man. 
and again, my love of stars and, and space and um, the Celtic symbols, um, the sp three spirals. Minerva. And so uh, this is a functional piece. And, um, you know, it would be nice to see it filled with cookies as well. So um, I know there were some questions that we wanted to address. Um, is there anything in particular that, um, that I didn't cover that uh, you'd like me to address, Deborah? Um, I think one of my questions would be, it, everything's so incredibly unique. Thank you. So just wondering about your process um, that sets it apart from other pottery, right? Um, so what's what's the inspiration? What what is the the impetus for such unique pieces for, for you? And maybe mm -hmm. maybe it's artists, maybe it's other artists, but um I think I think if we go back to these pieces over here the Jackson Pollock uh, plates, mm -hmm. it's, you know, when I think about other artists that have inspired me, I think about artists that have done things that are, are unique and groundbreaking. And um, it's, it's not that, um, that I really found Jackson Pollock's work is to be my ultimate muse, but I did like the, 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 the way, the way he worked. And, um, and it's so, um, so tactile, visceral about uh, the experience of of working, and clay is 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 very experiential. It's a it's a process. It's um, you know you need to you need to work with the clay. You need to create the form. You need to dry that form. You need to kiln fire it. Then you have these blank canvases to to apply color onto, and it's this, it's this long process that um, takes quite a while um, to finish. And um, you can't rush it either because of the physics of, of the material. So um, if you dry clay too quickly or you fire it too quickly, the material will basically complain and break and, uh, and you will wind up with nothing. So it, uh, the clay also teaches you patience as well. And when you talk about what makes my work unique, let's say from other clay pieces, I guess I would have to say is that there's, there's so many individual pieces and the fact that over the 40 years that I have been working with clay, I've somehow managed to create a living out of not repeating myself over and over and over again. And that I feel that even though all of the work is, is different, stylistically, they, they all kind of connect together. And um, so I feel kind of lucky to have found my way with clay uh, so that I could express myself in this fluid manner. And I, I think that's what's one of the things that really makes my work um, unique from others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd have to say that. All right. So... Our audience has seen what you have to offer us here at Vos. Next, we're going to switch over to a live show at your own place. So stay tuned, everybody. Okay, we'll see you at my studio. All right, so we did some adjusting there. Thank you. And as Randy makes her shift, I'm gonna make sure that um, she is spotlighted here as the speaker. So you wanna unmute. There we go. Okay. Good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Deborah, for putting that together. I want to apologize. Um, I'm not really sure why the video was so pixelated. I'm hoping that now uh, during my studio visit, um, 
you're not seeing jerky motions. Raise your hands if you're still seeing jerky motions. Is it smoother now? Is the video smoother? Yes, good, better? It is, better. It's good. Awesome, thank you for sitting through the jerky motions. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, welcome to my studio here in Camden, Maine. And um, I'm gonna, this is a new thing for me. So um, I'm, uh, I'm, bear with me. Um, we're going to start off with uh, some tile work that I've been doing. Um, I'm working on a commission right now for um, a private residence in Florida, and um, they're redoing their shower. And I've, I've started doing a lot of tile work over, um, oh, let's say the last three or four years, residential tile work. And later, I'm going to share with you some images of some of the public art commissions that I've done over the years as well. But we're going to start over here. I'm going to see if I can uh, figure out how to do this. So um, this is my space. I, I heat with this wood stove over in the corner. You can see that I'm a really great housekeeper. And um, everything is out so that I can get at it. This is um, the table where I'm going to be working on the, um, the tile commission. So I did this drawing um, of basically the composition of the piece that will go in the shower stall. So it's just a line drawing that will be interpreted onto this tile set up on the table. So I will, I usually stand when I paint and I will transfer these drawings onto the tile and then all of these will get painted um, with my glazes. And um, the teacher and me will show you sort of the whole process and hopefully I won't get um, too technical for you. Um, we're gonna walk over here. These are what I call my, my cast of characters for, um, the tile piece that I'm going to do. So before I start on a project, um, you know, glazes are always changing and clays are always changing um, their natural materials. So you need to do experiments um, or tests before every project. And um, uh, so these are basically the color scheme that I'm gonna be working with on these particular um, composition. Um, so this is uh, one of my cast of characters um, that will be in the piece. And then um, this is a, another uh, kind of experiment, if you will, that I worked on to create um, this next tile commission that I'll be doing. So I have extensive notebooks that I keep track of what each glazes and what the, the layering is, because when you're painting with glazes, um, what you see when you're laying down the color is not what you're ultimately gonna get. So it, you really have to, you have to, um, you have to get your chops down, you know, you gotta practice. And then once you get um, kind of relaxed with that, then you just kind of go for it and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> You have to leave it up to the kiln gods a lot of time. And speaking of the kiln gods, um, over here is my ancient kiln. And those of you that might be potters um, probably get a little chuckle out of this kiln. It's probably as old as me. I mean, it's an old kiln, but it's old faithful and it's, um, it's done me well. On top of the kiln here, um, I know that my teacher, uh, Claudia, is tuned in. I took a class online uh, this spring, um, and these are some of the, um, the figures that I did um, during that class. It was an animal, animal sculpture class. And no, Claudia, I have not fired them. <laughs> so these are still in the wet clay stage, and uh, eventually I'll fire them. Um, there's my wood pile over there. And um, these are some sculptures um, that I did um, over the summer studying with um, Claudia Oldigold, who's tuned in tonight. Thank you very much. 
And uh, I had um, the opportunity to go to a program in the Berkshires to do a sculpture class. And um, no, I have not fired these yet either. So I've been waiting for my new kiln to come um, because with my small kiln here, I have to chop them in half and uh, fire them in pieces. And um, so even though they were made in June, I've been able to keep them wet. It's kind of amazing. And uh, you know, now and then I kind of sculpt them a little bit more and refine them, and it's a it's a it's a process. There's that process thing again. So these are um, mermaids in a sense. They all um, have um, a love of the water. Um, this is a another one as well, and I just unwrapped them for tonight's presentation. They've been um, under plastic. Um, I've been working on lots of other commissions, so, um, but they will get finished eventually. I love, I love the face on this one. She has a super expression, really kind of cool. And um, so those are some of my figurative pieces. Um, when we look at some of my images later, um, you'll see some of my large uh, outdoor garden pieces that are actually finished and in, and, and, um, in sight um, outdoors. So, um, so we're gonna uh, take a walk over to um, the gallery space. So um, in Camden here, I'm kind of in sort of uh, suburban Camden, <laughs> if you will. I'm not right in the village and um, the space that I'm in is actually the upstairs of a large um, barn and um, so it's a it's a it's quite a large space. Um, so uh, this is this is kind of an interesting shelf of work here. These are some of my um, throne pieces. Um, I do, as you saw at the library show, some functional work as well. This is um, a kind of a prototype mug that I made that I've been making more of these carved pieces. Sometimes I make work and. Um, I kind of fall in love with them and then I kind of keep them forever. Like I don't really want to pass them on to the next person. <laughs> so that, that's kind of a problem really. And um, this is a, a series that I did um, working with uh, trees and um, I just sold a, a larger one that I really didn't want to sell because I really was in love with it. <laughs> But it went to a good home that I can always visit again. So, so that's a good thing. Um, this is a, a figurative piece that's that's been glaze fired, and um, I call her Minerva. She has wings. And I was wondering if anybody had any um, any questions or anything they'd like to address about some of the pieces they're seeing or any of the processes that we're looking at tonight. If anybody wanted to unmute and throw me a question that I might be able to field. Uh, we'll just keep looking at some of these other pieces. Elaine, you need to unmute. And this is one of the pieces that sold at the show. Okay. Um, this lobster plate has a home, good home, I might add. So that's a good thing. Yes, I have, I have a question. Thank you for unmuting. Can I speak? Sir, go ahead. Well, would you say it seems like you have like your um, your mermaid collection, you have a lot of animals, fish and these cats and and um, and then so do you, would you say that, um, what would you say is a provocative theme um, that runs throughout your work? Good food for thought. Take it, but my sister always gives me the most challenging questions. <laughs> well, you can think about it. You don't have to answer. <laughs> no, but I would have to say that, um, one of the themes that really runs through my work over the over the 40 year period, I say, and I, I said this many times, I like listening to my video 
again, the whole concept of process. You know, I'm, I'm like fascinated with the process and maybe it's the scientist in me. So it's, it's that whole kind of way of doing the work and how it unfolds. And, and because I've been working the same material for so long, I think that process keeps repeating itself in one way or another. And the cool thing about it is I'm, I'm always learning new things about this process. It's always challenging me all the time. So I guess that theme would be kind of the romance of the process of, of creating. How's that, Elaine? That sounds very good. I mean, that's, you like that yeah. one? I, okay. <laughs> I do like that one. Yeah, and I love you. And this is a wonderful thing. I'm so glad that you're sharing all this with us because none of us could come up there to see your most recent work. And it's just so great to be able to see all the gorgeous things you are doing right now. That big piece you made in the summer, it's absolutely astounding. Oh, thank you very much. I had a, I had a great teacher on that one too. So yeah, it was great. It was a, I, I love that piece. And I think that's also why I'm kind of, I have fear of firing um, because I, I also will also have to come up with a glaze process for it. And that's like a whole other process. So there's always that. I'm kind of looking to see if there's any yeah, questions. Yeah, Mandy, um, just so, oh. so Arlene said the romance, making a statement, the romance of the process of creating. And then I think Christine has her hand up. So we'll just wait to see if she'll unmute and ask her question. Ah. Hi, Randy. Hi, Christine. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you for doing this. And thank you, Vos Library. Uh, going back to process, and you speak about your scientific thinking about the work that you do. What I'm curious about is what does it look like in terms of, I know you take a lot of notes, you know, about your glazes, about your firing. I would love to hear a little more about when you start a new project. Like, do you go back to certain notes or... Do you remember things off the top of your head? I'm just curious about that whole process. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, uh, one of the things is, is finding the notebook. That's, that's a big challenge. Because I'm, I'm always kind of uh, challenged by you know, keeping, because while I'm working, I'll just like grab something and I'll just start writing it down and I'll say, oh yeah, I'll remember where those notes are. But so, so a lot of times it's kind of visceral and I'll just kind of go for it if, if I'm doing something that isn't a commission. But if it is a commission, yeah, I go back into those notes and you know, I have like, like these notebooks here. So you know, I, I keep track of what the, the glazes are and um, <laughs> all of this, like super notebooks and they're, they're everywhere, all over the place. You know, these are my lobster notebooks and lots of, lots of paper everywhere. Um, this is a whole bunch of notebooks and stuff over here. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. Yeah, so um, I do go back. I, I do take copious notes um, and then you know, the, the challenges is keeping them organized and at your fingertips so you can pick them up again because you can really learn a lot. Although I have to say that my best tool has been my camera because um, this little thing has become uh, an amazing tool because I can record everything on the camera and I always know where my phone is. So <laughs> yeah, I can always go back in and look through the dates and I, I archive them so I can see the process. Mm -hmm. And that is gonna just segue us into the process of some of my images. Um, so I'm gonna show some images and I'm gonna speak while I'm uh, showing them. And I would love it it's if anybody wanted to chime in and say, you know, what is it or ask me a question or um, I'm open to fielding anything uh, that you might want to throw at. So I am going to see if I can do this now, Deborah, and not mess up. So I'm going to share my screen uh, and start the broadcast and tap here. 
and then I'm gonna go over here. Looking good. Let's start with that. So how do I make that open up? So you'll tap which one you wanna start with. And then I say, do I say select all? Well, is that the folder? Yes. Uh, I guess, yes, right? you can. And then I go back to Zoom, broadcast, stop. Don't broadcast, click it. Don't cancel, nope. no. And then I go, oh, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm being challenged. Can you double click it? Double click my photo. Yeah. Double click the one you want to open. All right, I have another way to do this that worked before. So I'm gonna cancel this. I'm gonna go back to this. Just bear with me for a second and see if I can go back to that. I'm gonna share my content, share my photos. We're gonna go here. I'm gonna go, sorry with the learning curve here. It's okay. And, um, but I put together this photo album that will kind of bring us through. And I know my my Zoom aficionados out there like Christine is saying, why didn't she ask me? I could have helped her with this, but no, I had to do it myself, right? So, yeah. okay, here we go. We're ready to rock and roll here, done. There we are. Hey, not so bad, right? There you go. <laughs> so you can see this is an older picture of me. Um, <laughs> So this is a commission that I did um, back in 2006. And um, this particular piece is, as you can see, it's quite large, it's about four by four feet. It's a relief sculpture. Um, you can see the textures on it. Does that zoom in for everyone? Yes, yes. Cool. It's good. So you can see um, a little bit more. I mean, like from, from here, it looks like a painting. And uh, so this is an installation. Um, in Eastern Maine, no, this one's in Maine Medical Center in Portland, and um, it's um, the emergency room wing. Um, and the figure kind of gives you a sense of um, how large it is. Um, it was an interesting commission to do. Um, it's a place where it's kind of a safe haven for people who are um, experiencing uh, loved ones being in the emergency room. It's kind of a waiting area where they can use their cell phones. So I wanted to bring the outside in. There's no windows in that space. And I wanted to bring nature into this space. Uh, this is a detail of one of those pieces. And um, these are uh, kind of imaginary landscapes that I've put together that are conglomerates of the, the area where I live, um, the Camden Hills. and um, kind of bringing together the elements of, of nature. Um, this is an echinacea flower down at the lower bottom, uh, fiddleheads. So um, they're bringing the natural world in. And this gives you an idea of what it looks like before it was um, glaze fired, very textural. And then that's the last piece in the series. It's, it's, it's called the shooting star. Um, the, the so, series uh, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. When you have these tiles, um, you said that sometimes things blow up in your oven, so um, in your kill. So um, what would happen if you made this plan of all these tiles fitting together and then one right. of them blows up? Yeah, it's, it's like the worst nightmare, right? So um, what I do is I have a template for each one of my pieces. Um, and I have a, that shape in this case, you know, if this one had a problem, I'd be able to remake it. And it, it would be a challenge, but I could do it. And uh, so yeah, I keep a, a template of, of the shapes so I could plug it in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then those are more things that I keep. I have all these drawings and templates and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's a good shot of that piece. So uh, recently I started doing uh, tile commissions for um, homes and these are um, 
actually technically less challenging <laughs> because they're not in relief. And um, all of these tiles are six inch tiles so that if something happens with those, I could probably paint it in. Um, but this is a, a countertop that's reflecting the piece. I even made the, um, the, the, the light outlet. Um, so this is, um, um, this is a detail of that particular piece. It's great. It's so Thank great. You. And then here they are in, in the kitchen. Oh, this is a woman is a collector of mine. She has a lot of my fish and mermaids around her house. And I did a painting of what I was going to do before I did this piece, because I thought like, do you really want all these, these like crazy fish in your kitchen? And she said, absolutely. So you know, we did this beautiful, beautiful piece for her kitchen. So uh, you can see there's one of my fish kind of hanging off of her microwave over there. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a, it's a great whimsical place. And then she has all these windows that look out over the water. So it's quite watery. Um, this is a recent um, commission that I just did for David Getchell. And um, we just finished this uh, walk-in shower. And um, here I am working on it in the studio. So you can see right there, here's the process. Um, there's my test tiles of all the different grays that I'm working with. But when you lay the grays down, they, they just look sort of white. So all of these colors will, will, will transform in the kiln. And, um, so this shows you, like Christine asked about my notebooks lately, using my tiles as my notebooks. <laughs> so I just like write on what uh, on the pieces what I'm what I'm using so that I could repeat it. And then here's the fun alchemy of the situation: is once you fire the pieces, so I always fire part of it. And like these tiles on the left and on the right, those have been kiln fired. Um, so you can see how they change. Um, and then, you know, this is a good example here. So this just looks kind of flat, but I know that when I lay the watercolor down, I'm layering it down in, in different colors, blues, so that it will come out like that. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy challenge. And then there it is installed. And get to see it again. And I must say that uh, David and his father were always striped bass fishermen. So this is where the theme came from to do the striped bass. And we went back and forth about how realistic they were going to be. <laughs> and we came up on that one. And then here it is in the situation. So it's really fun to take a shower in there. All right, so we talked about the outdoor pieces. So these are uh, my installation pieces um, for the garden. This was an installation I did recently at um, um, Watershed, which is, uh, they had an outdoor sculpture program. And uh, this is called Six Feet Apart. So uh, all the sculptures are six feet apart. <laughs> and they're, they're all different. Um, this is them um, uh, getting fired in a walk-in kiln down at um, Mud Flat in um, Somerville, Massachusetts, where I was an artist in residence. And then here it is in sight. This piece is, is um, I call her Africana because she seems like the beginning of, of a species, uh, of a beginning of life. So she sort of is um, almost like a guardian of others to come. And this one's called the Three Faces of Eve. That's a detail. And this one's called the four directions. So north, south, east, and west. And there's a, a face facing each of the directions. So as you saw, they're also, they're like four feet tall. 
and they're fired up to 2,500 degrees. So they can be outdoors during the winter and uh, they get snowed in. And lots of these pieces have found homes in different people's gardens here in New England. Um, I think I'm going to end with this particular piece here with my slides. This was um, a commission that I did where I worked, um, I made a, I worked in clay and then I worked with a concrete company and these got casted in concrete. And this is called Three Communities Under One Roof. Um, so it was these three uh, uh, towns that came together to form this one high school that had never been um, together before. And there, um, it's along the Androscoggin River. So I did this river motif. Um, many of them are farmers and they're also in involved in the paper company. So there's symbolism with farming and pine trees. And then that's um, where it's installed. There's three of these pieces. Um, those are the three communities coming together. And here they are separate up above. Um, I think I have another shot of that. So that's as you approach the school, they're on the side of the building. They were huge and they each weighed about 1200 pounds and there was all sorts of um, uh, help to, to put those into the, um, the site. So um, I am going to end with those and then I'm going to come back to my video, which is me over here. And, and um, let's are, see. Are we running out of time? Um, yeah, yeah usually at eight o'clock. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I'd love to see the rest of your pictures. Oh, well, we can do that after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's great. Well, this has been great because, um, you know, it's always, uh, it's always uh, a little window into my studio practice. And I just, I wanted to thank everybody for, for tuning in and, um, you know, taking time from their busy lives to come and see my practice um, and what what I do um, with with my time and my energy. And I some people out there are near and dear to my heart, and it's great to see people out there and others who are interested in in what I'm doing. Thank you so much. Um, I did want to end with just one thing. Um, these are some sculptures that I did. Um, during the pandemic, which I guess is really still going on. Um, let's see, we're gonna push over this way, maybe this way. Uh, video, nope. It's not showing that. Anyway, let's see. We can see. Okay. We can see. We're just going to do this then. Okay, so um, these are some pieces that I did. Um, they're sculptural pieces that um, are kind of, they're, they're on the ground um, and they're also pointing upward and they're, they're trying to basically, um, it's really hard to see them because this camera isn't working like it should. It was working, Randy, if you do the flip, the flip around, we could see them. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. So these figures are really kind of, I think how many of us were feeling during the, the beginning of the pandemic, where we were just trying to hold our own ground and we were, you know, really trying to um, reach for energy that was coming beyond us so that we could all kind of exist in this new world that we were in. And I just want to um, say to folks, um, let's see, there we go, that, um, you know, we have a new year coming up and that I want to wish everyone um, a really wonderful holiday and a wonderful new year. And um, I just want to thank everybody for, for tuning in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. Uh, thank you, Randy. Really enjoyed it. 
What a wonderful presentation. And I will share with you, Randy, the chat because there's so many congratulations and people saying wonderful work and you're getting rounds of applause. So I will share that with you and I'm just going to close out for the evening. Um, thank you, Randy. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much for doing this too. Thank you. So this concludes our presentation for the evening and all of us at Vos Library want to thank you for attending our Vosa virtual Wednesday series and we hope that you'll help spread the word and join us on Wednesday, January 5th uh, when Carol Dana shares traditional storytelling of her people. Good night, stay healthy and as Randy just mentioned, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you.